Hi everyone, it's Bev here, your mental health coach, providing tips, tools, techniques and advice, helping you to stay mentally strong in these difficult times and beyond. The topic for this video is confidence and it has been requested. So how I thought I'd deal with the request would be to take a look at what confidence is, then examine how we lose it, do a fun but insightful exercise, and then leave you with a couple of pointers that will help you on your confidence journey. Now, if you want to deep dive into confidence, find out a little bit more, then when you subscribe, I will send you my ebook called Unleash Your Confidence. If you have already subscribed, and thank you very much for that, then just drop me a line and I'll send you a copy, no problem. So let's get back and examine the question, I lack confidence. Is that true? It absolutely isn't true. You do not lack confidence. It's really stressful and hard on the brain to say, I lack confidence when everything in your life requires confidence. Listen, if you can get out of bed, cross the road, negotiate traffic, ask for something in the shop, then you have a level of confidence. You're getting by. But you see, confidence is contextual. So you can't say, I lack confidence, period. It has to be in a certain area or in a certain scenario. So make a list. This is your homework. Make a list where and when you lack confidence. For example, you may lack confidence if you uh, have to speak up for yourself or speak out when you know you should. Do you lack confidence when uh, you have to speak in a crowd? People say they hate public speaking and presentations because they feel that all the eyes are on them and they get a touch of the imposter syndrome. Or do you hate it when you have to make small talk at a dinner party? You've run out of things to say. You get the, the lurgy and feel that what you have to say is not important. You hate networking, walking into a, a crowded room, all of that. It may be that you lack confidence in going for it, you know? You miss that opportunity. You talk yourself out of going for interviews and jobs that you know you can do. In your heart, you know you could do. Or you just find it difficult speaking to somebody on an intimate l level about things that concern you. What is it? Make a list and then you can deal with them as you go along. So the question therefore is what is confidence? If we consult the dictionary, the dictionary says confidence is an absence of doubt. So are you telling me that confident people don't have doubt? That again is not true. Confident people will feel the fear and do it anyway. They use that doubt to check themselves. To They use the doubt and transcend it. They use doubt and turn it into an adrenaline rush. I think that if you are, if you have no doubt, then you are bordering on arrogant. And I'm not talking about arrogancy, we're talking about confidence. Confidence with compassion. So for me, Confidence is about remembering yourself. You know, so when things happen uh, in your life, situations, events, you run the situation uh, past yourself to understand how you feel, what you want to do, what's the best action for you. You take yourself into consideration. You say, this is me, this is what I do, this is what I believe in. 
I'm certainly not on this planet to appease people and please people. I'm here to express myself. And if I need confidence in a certain area, bring it on. It's also about having faith. So to put a philosophical slant on it, confidence is about self-belief and knowing that everything happens for a reason and having faith that everything will work out for the good. So if that's what confidence is about self-belief and remembering yourself and declaring to the world, this is me, how on earth do we lose it? That's a good question. I've never seen a baby give up on, on walking. I've never seen adults crawling around the street saying, well, I tried that walking lark and it didn't work, so I gave up. No. I've never seen um, a child not try and try and try again to pronounce a word until they perfect it. You just ask a, a, a child of around, I don't know, two to play hide and seek, and this is how they'll play it. They'll play it like this. So for them, they are the center of the universe. And when they close their eyes, the whole world disappears. That's how self-centered we are. You just have to ask a child or notice a child um, speaking to an adult. Why? Why is the sky blue? Why are those trees that shape? Why is that man doing that? Why is that woman walking like that? And we are so curious. We want to know everything. Scientists say that we are like sponges from zero to seven. In fact, there's a Jesuit saying, give me the boy until he is seven and I will show you the man. No women existed at that time. But a lot of scientific and psychological uh, study is based on our formative years, zero to seven. And we are like sponges and we are soaking up everything in, env in our environment, but we're also soaking up all the things that are said to us. And we take it really seriously. So if something is said to us, we think about it, we make a conclusion about it. We get emotional about it. It becomes a habit, a way of thinking. It becomes our belief. It becomes our behavior. It becomes our destiny. All in the ages between zero to seven, we've made up our mind based on the things that we hear about ourselves. So just take one example, one really simple example. What happens if a child is just acting up, you know, and feeling itself and having a good time and playing and giggling and laughing and enjoying? An adult might say, stop showing off. Stop drawing attention to yourself. So what happens when you get to adulthood? Did that kind of message that you've heard day in, day out, just erase itself? No. So anytime you're called upon to say a few words, to put yourself outside of your comfort zone, to put yourself on the line, you get this voice inside your head saying, you're showing off now, stop drawing attention to yourself, and then you just become really, really small. So the good news is this, that was then, this is now. Scientists believe now that the brain is plastic. So just because you made up your mind about who you were all those years ago when you were seven doesn't mean that you have to be that person right now. The brain is plastic, so if you don't like it, change it. If you want to do something, fake it till you make it. So are you ready for the exercise? Okay, the exercise is this. What I want you to do is think about somebody that you admire, that you believe has all the confidence in the world. It doesn't matter if the person is rich, famous, dead or alive or lives in your house. It's somebody that you can look at and say, there goes a confident person. So I want to give you my example. 
My example is Bruce Lee. Sometimes I say to myself when I feel a little bit of doubt, what would Bruce Lee do now? Bruce Lee, let's have a look at his face, his gorgeous face. Bruce Lee inspires me to do better. Bruce Lee said, I do not fear the man that has a thousand kicks. I fear the man that has one kick that has, he has practiced for a thousand times. That speaks to me of determination, of discipline, of skill, of practice, of positive energy. But if you look into that face, you can see that there's a little bit of humility there. He doesn't take himself too seriously. And you can also see in his eyes that he is kind. So who is your hero, if you will? And what I want you to do as you think about that person, bring forward some of the skills that they have that tells you that they are confident. What is it about them? Is it the way that they dress? Is it the way that they command a room? Is it the way that they respond to people? And you'll notice that they are just at ease with themselves. You know, try on their persona. See if it fits you. See if you can emulate some of those skills that they, they have. We admire people for a reason. They're teaching us in, in some ways how to be. So again, that's your homework, another piece of homework for you. All right, so I want to leave you with a couple of things that you might consider on your confidence journey. So the first one, I think it alludes to, to Bruce Lee, it's the outer game. So how do you present yourself to the world? If confidence is energy, Right, so low confidence is walking around like this, not looking at anybody, not to make eye contact just in case they ask something of you. Um, that's low energy, but a higher energy would be to put your shoulders back, you know, and to look the world in its eye. There's a lot of research to support taking that power stance, and when you take that stance, you're informing your brain, I got this, everything is okay. So think about changing your posture. What about looking at the way that you, simply the way that you walk, simply the way that you sit, simply the way that you command attention. That's all within your gift. Another thing that you can do for the outer game is to set your brain to the learning dial. Never stop learning. If confidence is about not having conf if confidence is about having confidence in a certain area, that area, that area, then it is a matter of ticking off all the skills, all the talents that you have. So learn, learn, learn. Practice as much as as possible. And there's a thing: make it as weird and wonderful as as you like. You know, so you may decide I am going to learn how to cook. And what happens is that your, your brain regulates. So you learn how to put things together on time. You know, you learn how to measure stuff. You learn how to make things presentable. So you turn on your creativity and your art artist zone thing. You know, you, you turn on every aspect of yourself when you're learning to cook. So learn. Did you know that Bruce Lee uh, was the Chinese cha-cha-cha dancing champion in something like 1966? Absolutely. He was all for learning. So turn on that learning uh, notch in your brain and never stop. Practice makes perfect. Now, as for the inner game, what do you do for the inner game? Because you're never going to get confidence. No one's going to give you confidence. You're never going to get it by osmosis. No, no one is. You can't buy it in a shop. You're going to have to do it for yourself. Well, here's how you do it. Go back or imagine going back 
to the time when you were a child, when, ev when you were natural, when you were yourself. You're an adult now, so no one's gonna tell you off. No one's gonna tell you, stop showing off. Don't draw attention your, to yourself. Put it down, leave it alone, don't touch. All of those things that we hear that dampen our confidence, all the things that were peculiar to your existence that dampened your confidence. And go back to those carefree times when you were a child and you were innocent and you were spontaneous and you were happy and you looked at things with curiosity and you could spend a whole afternoon looking at ants build their nests and you were fascinated and when you turn that fascination on, when you become your natural self, then you will find your confidence. You will find your confidence. So do some work on yourself. If you don't have anything to go on, you can't think of a fun day, then make it up. Again, fake it till you make it. Having no confidence is childish. That's not what you're on the planet to do and to be. Having confidence is childlike and it's a beautiful thing to behold. Until next time, take care.